Oh, hey, are you here for the houseplant tour? Come on in. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dill here. So today I thought I'd give you guys an update on how my houseplants are doing. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been asking me to do an update houseplant tour and I know I haven't done one in quite a while. I'm pretty sure it's been over a year. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, I, a lot of my houseplants I still have that I featured uh, on my very first houseplant uh, video. Um, I have given away some, actually a lot of them, and I have also been collecting more of kind of a rare um, houseplants. So I thought it would be just, you know, nice to give you guys a tour and let you guys see what I have. Um, yeah, so I guess we'll go ahead and start right in front, that little guy over there. So let's go. All right, so here we are in our front um, entryway. Uh, and this is the very first thing you see when you first walk into our house. This is where we leave our keys, where we put our mail, and there is only one plant that is living here. Uh, this side of the house doesn't really get much light. We have a few windows, um, glass windows that are on our door, but and it gets a little bit of light from our bay window, which faces east. But aside from that, this, this spot right here pretty gets uh, low lighting throughout the day. So the only plant that I have here is this pothos. Um, it's still in its original container that I um, got it in about a year ago. And I'm putting it in this uh, kind of like a French style terracotta pot that I found uh, at a nursery um, in one of our wine tasting trips. I actually got a few of these in different sizes that you'll see um, around the house. And I just love terracotta pots, and but I especially love the French style ones because they just look so old. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. I mean, they just have like an age um, look to them. I don't know if they're actually old or they're just made to look like that, but either way, I don't really care. It just I just love them. So yeah, so this is the only guy that sits here and he's been sitting here um, pretty happy, I guess. It's pretty easy you know, to take care of. I'm pretty sure he would like a higher light, but he will tolerate um, the lighting on this area. So, but yeah, so I have him uh, just decorated with uh, a horse that I got from Home Goods, uh, this glass um, mirrored clock that we got from Living Spaces. Uh, this guy right here is also from Living Spaces and candlesticks that I got from, I don't know, uh, garage sales. Um, and you'll notice that I'm actually a minimalist when it comes to uh, my houseplants indoors. Um, I don't really like to pack my, um, my home with a lot of plants. Uh, I treat my plants as living decorations, so I like them to kind of, I don't know, live in harmony with um, my uh, accessories for the house that I have, that I buy, because I also love them. So I don't want one to overpower the, the other one. So, um, but yeah. So this is my pothos, this front of our entryway. And now I think we'll go ahead and um, go over to the bay uh, window area. All right, so here are the plants that are next to our bay window. Um, our house faces east, so we get morning light coming from that direction. Um, and then it goes slowly, works its way up. Um, so we get morning light coming in and then um, these plants gets protected from the afternoon sun. So they really love this space. Um, so on this basket, I guess we'll talk about this basket first and then we'll talk about those plants. So on this basket, we have, I think, four different types of plants. Um, the main one being this Alocasia dragon scale, which, I'm sorry, Alocasia pink dragon, <laughs> uh, which I absolutely love. It's actually growing a new leaf, so that's exciting. Um, when I first got this plant, I actually got this um, from a seller on Etsy. It actually used to be really, really small. 
and it just within the past two months just taken off so um, I'm excited for this to keep growing um, uh, at the bottom of that uh, we have this uh, philodendron Brazil that's filling up this basket um, really well we have a begonia I believe this is a begonia let's see Martha Stewart I'm not sure if that's the right name for this begonia um, I'm guessing it is I don't know but I love that name so I'm sure Martha Stewart um, approves uh, we have uh, Calathea Mosaica so which look at that leaf it's beautiful it's, it's really small um, I tried to grow this on its own but it just was not um, doing well uh, you know we ha I have a humidifier and I keep the humidity level inside my home about 75% but I, I just think it just needs um, constant humidity um, and you know sometimes when I turn off the humidifier uh, the humidity level in my house goes down pretty quickly so I decided to pop him in here and ever since then it's actually doing well so this is actually a new leaf um, so yeah and this is actually a pretty good way if you guys are having trouble with keeping up or keeping your humidity level in your house um, high um, I would just put them all in um, a grouping like this because they um, create their own humidity um, uh, environment or they create their own humid environment so yeah um, right now I have them inside so I actually planted them in an Ikea pot that I then put inside this basket that I got um, at a garage sale that Coda actually chewed on which actually I don't mind I think it gives it a little bit of personality so that is that for this basket all right, so next to the basket in this wood and bamboo tray that I got from uh, Magnolia Market. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of HGTV's Fixer Upper, but I'm a huge fan of that show. I'm a huge fan of Joe's work. Um, and they have a website where they sell all the furniture and house um, accessories. And so that's where I got this from. And I normally do not like having pots just laying around everywhere in my home. Um, but I figured, you know, having... Um, putting them in uh, a tray like this kind of helps because it keeps them organized and uh, it, they just, it just looks neater. And you'll also notice that um, a lot of these plants are pretty young and I actually really like to buy my plants um, on the younger side because one, it's cheaper that way. Two, it gives me time to figure out where I want to keep them. And three, I really like watching plants grow so I feel more of a proud parent when I can grow a plant um, that small and then watching it, you know, grow into this few, uh, this full grown um, uh, plant. So, but yeah, anyway, so there's a few plants here. So I'm just gonna go through them pretty quickly. So the very first one is this uh, variegated uh, Sansevieria Masoniana. I'm probably butchering that name, but it's a uh, Sansevieria Welfin. Oh, <laughs> Sansevieria, yes, well thin Sansevieria, that's, I, that's what it is. <laughs> um, but um, I really love the variegation on this. I love how the middle is just pure white like that. I don't think I've ever seen a variegation um, on a Sansevieria that is right in the middle. So um, yeah, I can't wait until that fully unfurls and became, becomes you know, a more like flat shaped one. Uh, so next to that is a uh, variegated Aglionema Silver Queen. And then we have um, this Aglionema Valentine. And I love the different um, shades of pink on these leaves. Um, depending on how much light they get, um, they actually get darker. So, um, and again, we only get morning light here. Um, and you know and it's also shaded still by this palm tree that's right in front of uh, the window so it doesn't get a lot of um, sun morning sun but it does get pretty good lighting up here so uh, here we have our variegated um, uh, elephant ear that I've had for a while um, 
it actually is just putting out new growth. It's finally waking up uh, for spring. It went dormant in the winter time. And the thing about elephant ears that when they go dormant, it almost looks like they're dying. So you just have to be patient with them. Um, you know, you have to just make sure that you don't um, uh, let the, their soil dry out way too much. I actually let all my soils dry out before I water them, but, um, and the uh, elephant ears will actually tell you when they need watering because they'll start to droop like that. And that's how you know it's time to water, water them again. Um, but yeah, I mean, check out that new leaf on that. Isn't that beautiful? It's almost pure white, which, you know, as you all know, could be a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> um, as long as the next leaf has more green on it, um, I'll be fine with that. But next to that is this uh, Syngonium Pink Splash, which is damaged. Um, I actually water, I, when I'm watering these plants, I take the whole tray out in our uh, back table and I'll water them there and I'll wait until all the water drips out and I'll put them back in. I actually forgot about them for a while and um, this one just got hit um, with too much light and it just bleached out a lot of um, the pink variegation in it. But you know, I mean, it's fine. I don't, it's not dying um, and it is recovering. So um, hopefully it'll grow new leaves soon and yeah and it'll be fine. So that's actually a new leaf. Doesn't really have pink variegation on it, but fingers crossed that it will on the next one. Uh, next to that is a Syngonium variegated, Albo vari uh, variegata. It's a really pretty plant. Start off with these two, two plants when I first got it. It's growing another one there and this one's also a new leaf so this one's actually it's a fast grower so i'm not worried about that one so next to that is this crocodile fern that i actually had growing in the vivarium but it just was not happy there i think it was just getting watered way too much so i popped it back out and um, planted it in its own pot uh, hopefully it likes this a lot better and will start growing new leaf so uh, you know crossing my fingers uh, back there I'm forgetting what that's, that is actually, um, but it's a bulb and it grows these beautiful, cute little orange flowers. Um, yeah, I'm forgetting what the name is. Uh, I'll try to figure it out and put it in a screen somewhere. And then we have an anthurium. I believe this is called an anthurium aura anthos. I will double check on that and um, put the right name on the screen somewhere as well. But I love the leaves on this. So the leaves um, start off this black color or a dark color and then gradually turns gray, uh, green. And it also has these salmon colored flowers on them, which are just stunning. It's not beautiful. I mean, next to that black or darker colored leaf. Then next to that, we have the Alocasia Sabrina reticulata. See the patterns on the leaves? I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Or maybe it's a lot better if you could see kind of like the, if it's backlit a little bit. It's not beautiful, the veining on that leaf. It's pretty gorgeous. All right, so behind that, we have an Alocasia black velvet. Beautiful leaf. There's water damage there, um, but yeah, if you've ever, if you have never felt um, this leaf before, I suggest that you um, feel it if you can find one, because it, it really does um, feel very velvety. It's one of my favorite alocasias. Uh, next to that is this variegated bird's nest fern. I actually had to cut off a lot of um, the leaf that had uh, the variegation on it because, again, I left this out for way too long and a lot of the leaf that had variegation on it kind of burnt. Um, so I cut those off, but it's actually um, growing new ones. So it's definitely okay. 
So here we have the tallest and probably the oldest plant inside our home. Uh, this is uh, a Dreisina, also known as a dragon tree. It's doing really good here. Um, that is a Saltex Solution um, uh, LED light. Um, and I highly recommend that if you guys are using, if you guys are looking for um, a grow light. I have a couple of those actually, one here and then I have another one in the bedroom. Um, hashtag this is not sponsored, sponsored by the way. <laughs> Um, then we just have another Sansevieria here and again one of these terracotta pots that we I got from one of our wine tasting tours all right so on top of our coffee table <laughs> Koda just made a huge sigh he's not feeling very well I think he's got um, allergies so poor guy um, he does have a vet appointment on Saturday so so here we have a blue star fern which is one of the most beautiful ferns that I have ever seen. I love the texture on this and I love the bluish um, green color um, of it. Um, next to that, I have a uh, variegated um, ficus pumila that has grown crazy in the past couple of months. When I first got this thing, it you only used to be up to here and now it's trailing off of the table, which I love. I love it when plants trail off of things. Um, and they are just um, inside of these amazing pots that I got from Home Goods. I mean, look at the detail work on these pots. And these are actually pretty cheap pots. I think the bigger one I got for, uh, I think 25 bucks, and this one was maybe $19, um, which I think is a steal for, I mean, how gorgeous they are. They just look a lot more expensive. And I know a lot of you guys have been asking where I get my pots from. Uh, and my answer is home goods. I love home goods. So uh, if you guys have one in your area, I suggest go going in and um, checking them out when you guys can, when we all can actually. Um, and I don't necessarily plant all my plants um, in, the pots, in the pots that they're in because I like to change them out here and there. So these are just in their regular, um, uh, these plastic pots and I just pop them in there. So next to that are these orchids that if you guys have seen my very first um, houseplant tour are still here, still have not bloomed, <laughs> um, which honestly I don't really mind. I know a lot of you guys have suggested that they probably need a lot more light than I'm what I'm giving them. Um, but you know, I don't mind uh, that they don't bloom or if they do bloom or if they don't. Uh, I just think they just look pretty inside of these, um, another, you know, these set of terracotta pots that I got, um, again, from a nursery from one of our wine tasting tours. Uh, this is a tray, again, from um, Magnolia Market. And I just love this combination. I mean, I love this coffee table. Doesn't that look pretty? Here next to our fireplace is just one plant that probably needs no introduction. Everyone knows what this plant is. Um, but I just think it's so beautiful inside these uh, old crates that I got from a um, uh, garage sale in Oregon. And, you know, I wanted to keep this corner a bit more simple. Um, I wanted the you know the old crates to kind of stand out so i didn't want anything competing with that and i love the dark green against um kind of the patina of the wooden uh crates the old wooden crates so yeah you know sometimes simple is the way to go all right here we have on these plant stands uh, these plant stands again i got from home goods they are, these are actually meant to be outside but um I don't know, I just thought they were way too pretty to be outside. So I'm keeping them in here right next to our, our couch. And this is just your average um, spider plant next to a Hoya Carnosa. Uh, I actually used to have a Marble Queen inside of this one, um, but I decided to take it out and give that plant away uh, just to give this plant a lot more room to grow. So yeah, 
I know a lot of people have been asking um, how that uh, how that combination is doing. Uh, well, that's how it's doing. So, <laughs> uh, but I actually gave that marble queen to a family member, so it's actually doing. Uh, you know, it's found it's good. I uh, found it's a good home for it, so everything's good. So here, as a centerpiece of our uh, dining table, we have a few plants. We have an Anthurium um, purple arc, I believe, and there's three of them planted here. Um, and they grow these beautiful, um, just fairy-like flowers. I thought I saw a bloom here the other day. Maybe not. Um, oh, yep. Oops, sorry, there's my hand. So just beautiful purple flowers, along with some ferns. There's a couple of ferns on either side. Um, there is a Calathea Freddy here and a Calathea, Calathea lancifolia on this side. Um, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to keep this um, planted um, on this centerpiece. I'm thinking I might have, I might want to redo it um, and change it up a little bit and maybe have some orchids or something, but I'm not sure yet. Um, you know, I've had this for a couple of years now, so I think it might be time for a change, but we'll see. Um, it does have a little bit of um, overwatering um, burn on the edge of the tips, but it's fine. So here behind our dining room table and underneath our skylight and on top of this console table is housing some of my most um, uh, price uh, house plant possession, I guess you might call it. Uh, this side right here, because it's right underneath our um, skylight, has the brightest light. So this is prime location right here. So obviously this is where I'm going to keep um, a lot of my more expensive house plants that I keep, I'm keeping. So let me go ahead and uh, give you guys a closer look of what they are. All right, so this is a Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. I actually have two of this um, on this side. There's one here and there's one hanging up there. And look how cool these leaves are. So when they first show up, they show up these with this um, kind of pink variegation on it and just slowly turns white, which is really, really cool. And I just have that um, inside a basket. Um, and I am a big fan of uh, vintage pulleys. So I thought that would be a, a cool way of um, decorating or uh, hanging up this plant. And then this little uh, terrarium right here is housing some of my, I call this my little uh, baby nursery. So inside, you will find a begonia jul julau, I think that's how you, you say it, but I love the pink, um, I don't know, outline, or I don't know what you even call that, veining on that plant. Uh, I'm really starting to get into more of begonias uh, this year. I was never really into them, um, but I mean, how beautiful is that? How can you not want that, right? Um, also, here is called, uh, what is this called, a white stanaglosa. It's a type of uh, jewel orchid. I believe it's also called a, a, a mosaic jewel, but look how stunning the leaf patterns are on that. Now, I don't want to lift this up because these plants actually need uh, a, a constant humidity and I try not to lift up um, this lid uh, too many times, so just to keep the humidity level in there pretty um, constant. And then we have also and two of dragons here, two baby dragons. We have the, this alocasia silver dragon, which is doing amazing. I actually got these just as bulbs, and they are now finally starting to come up. And that is an Alocasia Beginda uh, Dragon Scale. So I'm very excited for that one. I love any plant that has a dragon um, attached to its name. And I now have three dragons in my house. Uh, if you can remember the one uh, by the bay window, the dragon, uh, Alocasia Pink Dragon. And now I have her brother. So how cool is that? But this corner, 
this corner is where I keep my prize um, house plants. <laughs> um, so um, these are probably some of the more expensive plants that I've that I have in my collection. Again, these are in the smaller side. So can you, if you could just imagine having these like bigger, uh, how much people would uh, pay for them. So uh, this is, you know, for me, it's better to keep them having, uh, to have them uh, this small, that way I don't pay um, so much money of them. And again, I like to watch them grow. So, um, but yeah, so this is a philodendron uh, white king. I believe that's what it's called but look how white the variegation on that is now I've seen um, some plants have like uh, kind of like half white half green and so I'm hoping that this plant uh, someday will do that because I think that'll be really cool and then we have the philodendron mame this is a new leaf so these are really old so these were damaged from uh, shipping these two but it's already putting out new growth so these it's already it's already put out two new growth in the past month and it's putting out another one there behind that is a uh, philodendron El Choco Red I call it my gangster philodendron because of the name you know El Choco Red I don't know why it reminds me of a gangster name but it does um, again this was damaged um, from shipping so uh, but I'm not really worried because it's already growing a new one, a new leaf. So I'm just waiting for that to unfurl. I don't really want to touch it too much. Just kind of just want to leave it alone. Don't touch it. Just leave it alone. This is my prize possession as of right now. This is, as you all know, it's a um, Monstera Deliciosa uh, Albo. So... I mean, how beautiful are these leaves? I mean, this is still a young plant. It still has not, it doesn't have any fenestration on it, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the next leaf will, um, but it doesn't matter to me, I, I can wait. But look how crazy that leaf is. I mean, you could see my fingers through it. And again, I mean, this is not good for a plant to keep producing um, an all white leaf because as we all know um, you know it doesn't have chlorophyll in it so it can't actually cannot um, uh, get energy from the light so you need to have it balance itself um, which this plant seems to be doing because um, before this leaf um, it pushed out this pure white one so I was kind of worried that the next one would just be all white but it pushed out this leaf so uh, you know now I can um, have a sigh of relief that it's not, you know, trying to kill itself, I guess. <laughs> uh, look at the half moon one. That's beautiful. So, yeah, so that's this corner of the house. So down here we have the Spatophyllum domino. So these are actually becoming a lot more popular. Um, in the houseplant world, uh, these variegate, various variegated uh, peace lilies. Um, so I'm glad I was able to put my uh, get my hands on one. Uh, has a little bit of water damage, over watering damage, so I have to watch my watering. Um, but yeah, beautiful down there. It's getting enough light, I'm hoping. And I'm hoping it pushes out a lot more variegation. So, so in this wall, which I like to call our colorful wall <laughs> this is the only wall um or the only part of the house that has a lot of colors in it in the living area anyway um, but we only have a few plants here so this is the neon philodendron which is so beautiful and such an easy plant to take care of um, i just have it growing inside of this pot that i got from holistic habitat um, you know, I like the shape of this pot, but I don't like that it's um, doing that. See how it's kind of like staining the white parts of the, um, the pot, I guess. I don't know if it's, um, I don't know if the dirt is seeping into the paint. 
Um, but I mean, I guess I could always just repaint that, but it doesn't really matter anyway because the, you know, the leaves of the philodendron is blocking it. Then we have a gasteria, which is pretty sure probably needs more light, but I kind of like that it's kind of weird reaching out like that. Then we have a Haworthia. And these little pots, these pots also I got from Holistic Habitat. Again, hashtag not. Um... All right, so now we are walking into a room that we like to call the Red Room, which, you know, I mean, obviously because of the red walls. But um, so my partner and I um, are collectors and we like to collect a ton of random things. Uh, we're very into comic um, books. Um, we love just kind of cheeky, funny things like that figurine and there's Paris Hilton in there, the book, which we think is just so funny. Um, but yeah, so this is, you know, we wanted a room where we could keep all um, the, the stuff that we, the weird things that we collect um, throughout the years. And we thought that this room would be perfect. This room actually, uh, we spend a lot more time in this room because this room also uh, acts as our entertainment room. So this is where we watch movies and TV. Um, and we do have a sky tunnel here. So it produces, so the, the light in here is pretty okay. I still wanna say it's probably in the lower uh, side. So not a lot of plants um, can really grow in this room, uh, but we do have a few, which, you know, peace lilies, of course, are doing amazing here. Um, then we have a snake plant there in that corner. I believe that's called a moonlight. But yeah, they're doing very well. I mean, look how huge the leaf is on this plant. Huge. But these are not the star. I mean, they are the star, but they're not the star of this room. The star of this room is actually this vivarium. So this vivarium is a moss vivarium. Let me turn off some of the lights because I don't know how well it's going to show. So this is my moss terrarium, vivarium, I'm sorry. Um, that's also housing a couple of dart frogs. I'm not sure if they're out and about. They're probably, oh, there's one up there doing the splits. I'm not really sure what he's doing, but it's, there's actually another one. It's probably hiding, but this is my moss vivarium. Uh, this used to be, it's a 75, 75 gallon tank. This used to be um, an aquarium with full on CO2 and all that stuff. And, you know, I just found it very hard to maintain. So I turned it into a moss vivarium, uh, which is a lot easier to maintain. Uh, it's got um, a sprinkler system that I installed. So I never have to water this thing, um, which is good because I have so many things that I have to worry about. But yeah, so we just sit on this couch and, you know, you don't even have to watch the TV. You can just watch the vivarium if you wanted. It's very peaceful. I love moss. Um, it just reminds me of, I don't know, like a enchanted forest. So I love, I love just sitting here and putting on some really nice music and just relaxing. Uh, next to that is a heart-shaped uh, philodendron. Next to that is sick coda 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 all right well it's probably over me all right so now we're entering the art room uh, that also doubles as my i guess my office which i really don't do any work in here um this actually used to house a lot more plants um, but again uh, over the years, I, over the year, I've been kind of um, slowly kind of giving those plants away uh, just to give me a little break of how many plants I have to take care of. Um, but I did replace it uh, with this. Um, so this someday will uh, become uh, an orchidarium to house a lot of the orchids. So I've been collecting 
a lot of mini orchids. So I am just, I'm still looking for a stand for it, which is why I haven't started um, creating that orchidarium. So once I find a, uh, a stand, uh, then, you know, I'll go ahead and uh, create one and I'll make sure uh, to make a video of it for, uh, for those of you who wants to see the process. But here we only have a few plants, aside from those plants that are in there. Uh, we have the Pelea that I've had for maybe two years now that it started off as a small seedling. I probably smaller than this plant right here. And now it's just grown to this. So this will always be with me because I grew it from such a small plant. So I'm very proud of that. Um, this is also, this is an orchid. Um, can't really read that handwriting. Uh, Bulbophyllum Elizabeth Ann, I believe. But it's got some really cool uh, flowers. Uh, I'll try to uh, find a flower and put it on uh, the screen somewhere. And this is also where Coda likes to bark at other dogs that are walking past our house. All right, guys. So I think that is it for this uh, tour. Um, I've pretty much shown you guys all the plants that I have in the house. There's only a couple of rooms that we didn't get to. And that's only because it's housing kind of the same types of plants that I have uh, in the living room. Uh, the other room has more pothos in it. And the main bedroom has, what is it? Has a ZZ plant pothos and I think that's it that's all we have so oh and a peace lily so yeah I mean so there's really no need for me to show you guys uh, what those look like since I've already shown you guys a few of those uh, in this tour um, but anyways it's starting to get late um, I think ooh, it's time for me to make some dinner so I'm gonna let you guys go here uh, but thank you guys again for watching and thank you for um, being patient and waiting uh, for me to do to give you guys an update on my house plants um, and I will make sure to not wait another year to give you guys an update so um, anyways thank you guys for watching I hope you guys subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one see ya